Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we have a nice, small, intimate group. We've got the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Mark? Um, I'm a little insecure about my mic at this point in time. But other than that, I'm great. Uh, we've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Really good. Really good. Good to see you. And of course, we got the big papa, Tate Litchfield. I love it when you call me big papa. Tate, how are you? I'm, I'm good. Yeah, really good. Happy to be on the call today. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's just get into it. Let's just skip the pleasantry. And Eric Peterson, walk us through it. All right. So our topic for this week is um, going to revolve around the idea of negotiating um, prices with your buyers. So, you know, a lot of times we talk about our terms pricing and our cash pricing, you know, we might discount a cash price, et cetera, but um, we don't really talk uh, a whole bunch about just the idea of a potential customer calling you and saying, Hey, you know, I know you're, you're asking for $99 a month on that property, but I want to do it for $90 a month or whatever the case might be. And um, so we thought we'd have a discussion around that and uh, just whether or not we do that um, in any way. And uh, I guess I could start off with a, a recent situation I ran into. I had a um, investor reach out to me who owns lots of different parcels of land has worked with other land investors and basically said, you know, I like this property you have. However, you know, when I work with John Doe land investor, he sells to me um, for the same as cash, but I pay it off over two or three years or, or maybe four years, as opposed to your eight year term or whatever it might have been. Um, so essentially he's asking for a, a terms price um, that is the equivalent to the cash price, which I would collect now. And, uh, you know, sometimes that's, it's a little hard to swallow. It's not the same terms that we're used to. It's not the same return, but it's a sale potentially. So is it a good choice to, to go ahead and accommodate that investor, especially in a case where this person might buy a lot of land in the future? Um, I think so, but I thought we could talk about that. I think it's a really good topic. And um, let's just go to somebody who won't negotiate with terrorists, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi. I'm always willing to negotiate and make the terms more palatable for the, the buyer. As long as my yield, you know, it's, as long as it's still profitable for me, right? I have someone today, particularly if they want to, you know, pay a little more cash up front, right? If they make sure they give me 20% cash up front instead of 10, I'm all for that. Um, but definitely, if they want to pay 199 versus 99, that's fine with me. I just have to run it through the yield calculator and make sure it's not below about 80. So well, what, if they, what if they want to pay 85 rather than 99? Oh, definitely. I'll go for that and make it a longer term. It's, yeah. And it depends upon how much down they're going to put down too, right? So they want to put a couple hundred dollars down and then go to $85 a month. I'm all for it. Nothing wrong with that. Big Papa, you, you've got a skeptical look on your face. You're really noodling on this hard. I am because I, I'm kind of viewing this as two different questions. And the first question is, is my monthly payment, you know, negotiable? Let's say I'm looking for a hundred and he comes back and says, Hey, I want to do 85. As long as the numbers make sense, I'd accommodate that. But I don't think I'd ever take, say, my cash price and discount it or owner finance the cash price over a shorter period of time. That's that's where I'm I'm struggling with it because right. Ditto. I, I'm willing to work with people because I see the value in keeping a customer happy and building that relationship. But when I buy a piece of property, I'm taking into I'm taking in a lot of different variables in, into consideration, you know, time value of money, just being straight out, you know, off the top of my head. 
that's something that if I invest a thousand dollars, I know that on every other property that thousand should yield, you know, three to four thousand dollars in profit. So if I'm cutting that down and saying my thousand dollars is now only going to uh, produce maybe fifteen hundred dollars in profit, am I doing my shareholders, uh, you know, harm essentially? So I, I don't know. I, I think it would depend on how serious the guy is. Um, but cash price is discounted and terms price is, is higher. So uh, I know if Scott were here, he'd be saying like, listen, all of my properties are sold at the exact same price, right? The cash price is the terms price. And so you already are getting a discount because I'm even considering working with you without a credit check or owner financing. So Scott, really, I don't see Scott like bending over backwards and slashing the overall value of the property by 20, 30% just to keep somebody happy. I don't know. I do have some in particular locations also where I don't care who you are. I can't budge on the price. They'll, they sell quickly and there's a demand for them and I, it, it would hurt my business. There's too many other buyers that would pay the full price. So yeah, I think that's, I think that's a really good point, Mimi, because I don't think when we negotiate with buyers, we can sort of have this rigid set of rules Every property is unique in every county is unique. Supply demand can be unique. Your pricing model could be unique. And so you almost have to think about it in terms of not only just yield time value of money, but also just, you know, what's going on with you at that moment in time financially would the cash flow at that point in time, benefit you where you could put that money right away into another deal? Or do you know, like Nini knows that, Hey, you're the juice isn't worth the squeeze um, on that deal. Because I know that if I wait three more days, I'm going to get my retail buyer. And also I think Eric brought up a good point was that they're saying, Hey, look, if you do this for me, I'm going to be a really good buyer in the future. So I'm not just buying this one. I'm going to be buying lots and lots from you in the future. That also has value. But I think what Tate said in the philosophical, you know, idea of terms is terms, cash is cash, and that's it. We're not going to give you a cash price and finance it. We're just not. I wouldn't be able to go to bed and with any self-respect, right? If I, if I was doing that. So a lot of times you go ahead, Tate. Well, I was going to say, but then I'm, I'm thinking about what I just said. And now I'm even questioning what I just said, because, you know, it's not about what I want, right? It's about what the market wants. It's about what my buyer tells me he's willing to pay. And if I come out here and I'm saying this property should produce 10,000, it should sell for 10,000. And somebody comes and says, here's 7,500. Am I really going to let that deal go? I mean, if the numbers work and I'm still making money, I guess, I don't know, Mark, I'm beginning to second doubt or second guess even my own, my own opinion here. Well, I, I don't think you're second guessing. I think what you're saying is that you would discount the price. If they offered 7,500 and you had it at 10,000 and you had no other market comps to go on, you might at that point in time do it. Mm -hmm. But if you've been selling that same property for 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, I come to you and say, okay, Tate, here you go, 7,500. You might tell me to go pound sand because you yeah. know Mimi is going to be picking up the phone in a day or two and doing it for 10,000. So Eric, given all these different responses, what's your big takeaway? Well, I think ultimately it comes down to a property by property basis. I mean, kind of like Mimi said, you know, if you're in an area where you're turning those properties really quickly and your margins are maybe tight, um, there might not be room for negotiation there. However, if you're in a different area where maybe the property takes a little longer to sell, or maybe you have higher returns than normal, um, maybe you have that room uh, to, to go ahead and discount and, and essentially take a cash price for a, a terms deal. In this particular case, 
I think I'm going to do it um, because the bottom line is my cash price was higher than 300% return on this property. And by this potential customer financing the property, his payments are going to be more than double what I was asking for. So um, I'm, I'm probably going to do it. But I, I, did, mean, I did struggle with it for a long time yesterday, going back and forth because I'm like, no, I don't do this. I don't sell a property at a cash price on terms. I'm just not doing it. But then the more I thought about it, I'm like, it's a win. Like I'm making money. Why would I not sell this property? So this morning I sent the guy the email and I said, you know, do you want to do the deal at this, at this price? Eric, ultimately we're in the business of selling property. So I think it's a, you know, it's easy for me to say, oh, I would never negotiate. But if I had somebody who was serious making those kind of offers, I would accommodate them. I'm almost certain I would because it's all about building that passive. And yeah, it's going to be shorter time, but we're in the business of selling land. And if you're selling land, you're making money. So, yeah. Uh, and if he's buying, if he's buying more properties, okay, so your margins might be thin on this one, but that doesn't mean it won't be on the next one or the next one. Right. I actually wanted to prove it up front and say, look, I'm willing to work with you, but you got to, you know, you got to buy two more properties for me within yeah. the next, you know, 30 days and, and just, you know, give me a good faith $500 deposit right now. So I know you're serious because I've got lots of people always talking to me about how they're going to be this great long-term buyer. They're going to buy from me over and over again, but there's this guy, Mark at frontier properties. And as soon as he calls you, I never hear from you again. So I really want you to lock down your loyalty to Landopia right now. And then I'll be flexible like a Yogi and I'll work with you. I love I, it. I'd want more than the one deal personally to, I if I was going to give that kind of, discount so if anything i'm gonna anything i'm gonna give i'm gonna ask for something else in return tate what do you think i think that's smart i uh i really like that i mean if the guy is gonna be kind of one of your vips have him prove it you know with loyalty comes added bonuses and perks so i uh i agree 100 percent. give it a shot i mean the worst case is he says no and you say okay fine let's just go with what we originally talked about <laughs> Or, or you say, well, look, in, in that case, we'll just meet in the middle between cash and terms. Yeah, That's fine. And then we can kind of go from there because you're saying one thing, but you're doing another. And, and I, you know, want to, I'm going to negotiate too. I'm just going to give you what you want. It's a negotiation. Um, Mimi, what do you think? Great. Yeah. I'm on board. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you could even, Eric, say as a bonus, if you have a pesky neighbor, uh, I have the terrorist hunter. She's got a drone. We'll take care of it. No worries. Right? So I, I'll really have your back. Like so it. you did it? So you did the deal? It's not done yet, but I did make the offer. All right. All right. Great. And you're making the offer with your self-respect intact. All right. Right? I think so. Well, I mean, I the, numbers, the numbers are right. I mean, you're yeah. not going to go on the mastermind call and be like, oh, I, you know, I only made 350% <laughs> on this deal. I feel horrible about it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. the numbers are the numbers. And, you know, it's, it's still an amazing return. A deal's, a, deal's a deal. A deal's a deal. deal at the end of the day. I mean... I'm not going to get upset at anybody for selling property and making a profit. I mean, if you're doing that, you're doing okay by me. So I would do it, Eric. I'm glad you did. And I, you know, I, I think ultimately, you know, we, in the community, we all talk about our deals and we, we don't ever really talk about, you know, do we negotiate those at all? And I think it's important that the community does know that there is, a time where it does make sense to negotiate. You don't always have to stick to those numbers. Don't walk away from a good sale just because you're not going to make 
that desired percentage. As long as you're going to make a decent profit, it's worth accepting and, and moving forward. Yeah, I'll, n- I'll never forget that one of the earlier mastermind calls with Bob Demick, and he sheepishly had to announce to the group that he only made 250% on his deal. And he was really just embarrassed about it. And we're like, no, that's amazing. It's 250%. Like, where else are you getting that kind of return on your money? He's like, well, yeah, but you guys are always making, you know, 300 to 1,000%. Like, no, it's not always that way. So I, th- I think the moral of the story is you have to be flexible in business. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I just want to uh, remind the listeners that, that today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Wouldn't it be great if you could start working this business in 14 weeks with your Sherpa, Scott Todd, taking you up the mountain of land investing step by step, making sure that you get up there quickly, efficiently, safely. That's what Flight School is all about. Again, learn more at thelandgeek.com forward slash training schedule a call with the Zen master Mike Zeno or the nightcap Meister, the dude buddy, Scott Bossman. All right. So Tate had an interesting mastermind call last week that he's going to extend to everyone. Tate, what's going on? Yeah. So last week on the mastermind call, I challenged all of our, our attendees to tell me how many properties they were going to sell between uh, that Wednesday and October and 11th. And, you know, just as an example, we had, you know, people saying as many as two or as many as seven. So like John Burnett, he came out and said, I'm going to sell seven properties in the next basically 30 days. And the reason we're doing this is we want people to really put the pressure on themselves and on their marketing and, and get these sales that really move the needle. And, and there is a catch Everybody that committed to participate in this told me how many deals they were going to do. And if they don't achieve or hit that number of deals, they have to make a $25 donation for every property that they don't sell uh, to the charity of their choice. And they will need to submit a receipt. So I know that they lived up to their end of the bargain. So we're doing this because the market's hot. There's tons of buyers out there. And you guys, if you're marketing every single day if you're posting new ads on facebook and tons of ads on craigslist and hitting the land moto buyers list you should be getting leads there's no reason for you not to so we wanted to extend this challenge to all of our roundtable listeners if you'd like to participate in it please feel free to shoot us an email let us know how many properties you're going to sell and commit to it do whatever it takes to move the needle um you know this is a it's a good opportunity and what we found in the land geek coaching community is when we set these hard deadlines with uh, kind of a, I don't know, a challenge, I guess, people tend to step up and they tend to achieve these. So we're extending it to everybody. Join in with us, sell some properties. Eric's about to get his first of the last uh, couple days. So that's good. Let it be an example. Do whatever it takes to get these deals closed and, and join us, you know, build that passive. I love it. I think it'd be great if everybody could celebrate together at the Phoenix boot camp, which is coming up in five short weeks. Five short weeks. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash boot camp. We do have a few spots left. And then you can go up to uh to Tate and just drop the mic and be like, Yeah, I took the challenge, sold my three properties. Boom. Just not one and of my short mics, like the you know, like a like a fake mic. Like those things are expensive. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, we're at that point now of the podcast where we get to pick on Mimi and ask her for her tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Mimi Schmidt, what do you got? Well, it's a tip that isn't mine. I'm going to share it though. We were talking about it before we started the podcast. It is called landgrid.com and it is similar to first dam or a data tree or um, acre value, right? Um, first dam is hard to get access to. Uh, acre value is expensive and you have to sign up for each state one by one. It's more money with each, with each state. So this, this is very interesting 
this uh, landgrid.com because it's 10 bucks a month or a hundred dollars a year for the pro version. Um, so you can click on count, the county, find out some interesting information about the county itself, but then you can actually make lists, import and export data from it. So this might be worth really t tinkering with. I might make a switch. Yeah, I'm, I'm signing up for it right now. This is really cool. And it, it's really cheap, actually. Yeah. Um, amazing. And there's a free account, too. You just start playing with it for free. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. This is a great I'm interested. Tip. Yeah. Great, great that. tip, Mimi Schmidt. I can't take Look credit. at all this stuff. Yeah. Might save me a couple hundred dollars next year. Wow. Yeah, if anybody wants to know how big the market is, 145 million parcels online. Wow. 30.8 <laughs> million, million square miles. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually, I think it's bigger than that. I just think that's what they have on their software. Oh, I, I think it's way bigger. You know, it's kind of interesting because we went, uh, Scott and I attended a, uh, a conference recently and the market for that one was just over 40,000. And as soon as that number got thrown around, the scarcity mentality really started setting in and Scott and I were kind of laughing because we thought, oh, 40,000. I mean, we know people who own almost that many parcels. So um, it just goes to show you how this market is just, it's, it's beyond the control of any five or 10 or 20 people or organizations. There will always be room for the little guys. So if you're on the, if you're hesitating, there's no reason. Yeah, I mean, the great thing about this market is, let's say that you've been negotiating with a bulk seller, I don't know, let's say Colorado, and all of a sudden a guy like Eric Peterson starts negotiating for it as well, and actually takes the deal from you. You Deals can always you, go right? to Eric and like, you know, at some point he's gonna run out of money, maybe he'll wholesale a couple of those deals for you. Eric, what do you think, buddy? It's possible. Running low on some of those fives in Colorado. <laughs> what do you think, pal? On the podcast right now, will you commit? See how quiet he is, Mark? I know. He's, he's slippery, that one. He's, he's like <laughs> biding his time. He's like, uh, maybe if I don't say anything, they'll just move on to the next topic or Mark will get hungry <laughs> or tell us about intermittent fasting or something else. Like he'll just lose his focus and then boom, he's on to the next topic. Pelotons. Eric, yeah, I mean, it's time for let freedom ring. <laughs> it is time. It All is right. time. Are right, you guys ready? One, two, three. Let, let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't think it was that bad. It wasn't that bad, but it wasn't that great. You, you'd think it'd be easier with a smaller group, but not necessarily. Yeah. I mean, I can't just, I feel like I should close my eyes and just kind of feel it, but I don't know if that's the right way to do it either. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, Tate, I, I was watching Top Chef last night. Mm -hmm. I love that show. Have you guys watched Top Chef on Netflix? I told you. It's the most amazing program ever. <laughs> the, 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 story, the stories of these chefs and how they come to be is absolutely incredible and inspiring. And really, it's not even so much about the food and the creativity of it. It's, it's more about their origin story and how they came to be. It's, it's really just incredible show. Um, but you got to be in, careful. You know, I always, in what way? Like if, if you watch it too late at night, next thing you know, you're raiding right the pantry and just like stuff in your face because they're making something fantastic. Or in my case, I find myself on like Uber Eats and delivering food to the house at like 930 at night. Then the guy's ringing the doorbell, waking up the kid. You know, Allison was not happy about that. So just be careful. That's kind of like a word of caution to, to everyone. You know, what's so funny is I was actually watching uh, yesterday, but Zhang Kwan, the mm -hmm. Korean monk, and she mm -hmm. was talking about soy sauce. And all of a sudden I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get Kung Pao shrimp today for lunch. And I'm going to, you know, do the soy sauce thing. And I'm going to eat the chopsticks because the whole time they're eating with chopsticks, get a, you know, get a little Zhang Kwan in me. 
even though she's Korean, should really be going for Korean food. But Ooh, you need to she, do that she makes tomorrow. modest. But she's like she's a monk. She makes modest dairy food. It's very simple vegetarian food. Wow. So it's. I'm not I'm not ready to take that vegetarian leap quite yet. It's a cool program, really cool program. It's really cool. So, go ahead, Eric. I was just going to say it is. I I enjoy that show as well. Yeah. Mimi, what are you watching these days? Well, I'm hoping to go to the Downton Abbey movie this weekend. We'll see. It's coming out. I'm excited. We had a top chef come to Japan when we lived there and cook for us. That was like a, a presentation. There were, you know, like 50 people. It was the best food I'd ever eaten. It was absolutely amazing. Really? To this day? Yeah. It was so good. I mean, literally, wow. he like made this a basket out of woven cucumbers, and he had salt cured a salmon. It was super interesting to. It was just, yeah, they do interesting stuff. It, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, but I mean, but yeah. incredible I'm stuff. Down, yeah, I'm hoping to see Downton Abbey. We'll see. Have you? Did you watch the entire season? Yes, like all the seasons? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. See, I you know once it started getting real dark. And I, I couldn't watch it anymore. I think I think season three I stopped. But I'd I'd love to watch the movie. Yeah, it's good. The two grannies are funny. The way they take jabs at one another, it's hilarious. It's good. Yeah, I quoted uh, Down Abbey the other day on on Facebook for Labor Day because there's like a, that scene where you know one of the the laborers says to the royalty, one of the grandmothers, "Hey, have a great weekend," and she says. What's a weekend? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's yeah. like uh, all of us. What's a weekend? Our, our Saturdays and Mondays are the same. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, dear listener, thank you so much. If you're enjoying and getting value from the podcast, please share it on the interwebs. And um, hopefully you'll, you'll be, you know, doing three little favors. You got to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We are going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. And if you just put in the subject line, you know, listen to the bonus material, because this is actually the bonus material after the official podcast, we're going to send you our wholetailing course, how to flip planned 30 days or less and double your money. 30 days or less for free as well. All right. Thanks everybody.